Hi everyone and welcome back to part 2 of my introduction to Dart. In this video we are going to learn about functions in Dart. So let's get started. Now that we have seen how to create some variables and print their values, we would like to make this code a bit more reusable so that we can more easily print the name, age and height of a person. And to do that, we can introduce a feature of the Dart language which is known as a function. So what I'm going to do now is to write some code to declare a function and then I will explain it. So at the bottom of my editor, I can type in void space describe and then open and close brackets. And then inside brackets, I'm going to type in string space name comma and then int space age comma and then double space height and then outside the brackets I can open and close a curly brace just like this. So what I've done over here is to define a function and a function has a name which in this case is called describe and then it has a pair of brackets. Inside the brackets we can define some arguments which are the parameters that the function takes as an input. So in this case, I have three arguments and each argument is a variable which is defined by its type and a name. So I have a string name, an int age and a double height. The function can also define a return value which is something that we are going to explore a little bit later. In this case, I'm writing a function that has no return value and for this purpose I can use a special keyword which is called void. So the return type is always defined as the first thing when we declare a function. And one thing that you might notice is that at the top we also have something that looks like a function. In fact, here we have void main with empty brackets. So this means that main is a function that takes no arguments and returns no values. Okay, so we have now defined our describe function, but it doesn't really do anything just yet. And that's because the body of the function is empty. So what I'm going to do now is to take these statements and cut them and paste them inside the body of the describe function. And while I'm here, I'm also going to remove this print statement because I'm no longer interested in printing the number of letters in the name. So at this stage, I could run my code and I can see that the console log is now empty. And the reason for this is that in my main function, I'm not calling the describe function and so I'm not printing anything. So to fix this, we can go back to our main method and call our function and we can type describe with name, comma, age, comma, height. And then I say my colon in the end. And if I run the code over here, I can see that now the name, age, and height are printed. And if I want, here I could call the describe function again with different arguments. So I could say describe, and then the first argument, which is a string. So I could say mat within quotes like this and then for example 27 and 1.76 and then say my column and here I could run the code again and I can see that the console log has now three more lines with the values that I'm passing over here and just to be clear in the first call to describe I passed in some variables that I've declared beforehand and in the second call, I have passed in some values directly without assigning them to variables first. And this is fine because all that matters is that we pass the correct number of arguments and each argument needs to be of the correct type. In summary, functions are useful to define code that can be reused and we will use them extensively in this course. So let's continue on the next video. In the last video, we defined a describe function that we can use to print information about a person. What I'd like to do next is to modify this function so that it returns a string representing a person rather than printing to console. So in order to do that, we need to change the return type from void to string. 
And as you can see, the compiler now tells me that the function has a return type of string, but doesn't end with a return statement. So what we're going to do now is to replace these three print statements with just one. So I'm going to type in return an empty string like this, and then I'm going to copy in the contents of each one of these strings like this. So the first one, and then I'm going to add a full stop, and then I'm going to take the contents of the second string, and I'm going to do this, I'm going to add a comma, and then I'm going to take the contents of the third string and put it here like this. And then I can remove these three print statements. So just to be clear, the updated function now returns a single string which uses all three input arguments with string interpolation. And as you can see, if I run the code now, then the console log is empty. And this is expected because I'm not using the return value of the function in my main method. So what I can do now is to assign the return value of the describe function into a final person one equals, and I can do the same for the second one and type in final person two equals. And then if I want, I can print these values. So I could say print person one and print person two. And now if I run the code once again, I can see that the descriptions are printed as expected. Okay, so let's continue on the next video. While we are talking about functions, I want to introduce a couple of additional concepts in Dart. And the first one is called optional parameters. By the way, I will use the term parameter and argument to mean the same thing. So as far as we are concerned, parameters and arguments are the same thing. Okay, so the way we can define an optional parameter in Dart is by declaring it within square brackets. So in this example, I could choose to make the height parameter optional by declaring it within square brackets, just like this. And what this means is that when I call the describe method, I can omit the third argument if I want to. And I can run the code just like this. And as you can see, the first line in the console says, hello, I'm Andrea, I'm 34 years old, and I'm null meters tall. So what does null mean? Null is a special keyword in Dart, which is used when a variable doesn't have a value. So in this case, I'm not passing in the height when I call the describe the first time. And as a result, the height argument inside the describe method has a value of null. So in other words, null means no value. Now, since we have defined the height argument to be optional, what we could do is to define a default value that is used every time we don't pass a value. And the way we do this is by going to the parameter declaration and then we can add equals space and then a value, for example, 0.0, .0 in this case, and we can run the code again and this time we can read, hello, I'm Andrea, I'm 34 years old and I'm zero meters tall. So because we have not passed the height parameter to the describe method, then as a result, it takes the value 0.0, .0 which is the default value. On the second line instead, we pass a height of 1.76 and we can see that on the console, this value is printed. So in summary, default values are useful when we want to provide sensible defaults to parameters that are optional. And we will see more in detail how to use them in this course. So let's put back the hiked parameter and we can continue on the next video. In the last videos, we have declared a describe function which takes three arguments. And we have seen that we can call the function by passing in the arguments separated by a comma. And this works fine as long as we have only a few arguments. But sometimes we need to declare functions that can take many arguments. And this can become confusing if we only identify the arguments by their position. Fortunately, Dart provides a way of passing arguments by name. And this is very simple to do. 
So in my describe method over here, I can add an open curly brace at the beginning and a close curly brace at the end of the list. And I also need to remove the square brackets because we can't use curly brackets and square brackets together in Dart. Then we can go back to the main function and what we need to do now is to name each parameter that we pass to the describe function. So here I can type name and then column space name, then age column and then space age and then height column and space height. And I also need to do the same on the second invocation. So here I can type in name, age and height like this. And if I run the code, you can see that everything still is working as expected. So as you can see, when we call the describe method, it is now a lot easier to understand which parameters we are passing in. And named parameters are used extensively in Flutter, where it is very common to have functions that take a lot of parameters. So in summary, named parameters result in code that is a little bit more verbose, but at the same time, it is also clearer to read. So I recommend that you use them often. So let's continue on the next video. We have now spent quite a bit of time getting familiar with functions. And before we move on, there is one last thing that I want to talk about. In Dart, there is one special operator that we can use to make our syntax more concise when functions contain just one statement. And that operator is called the arrow operator. So let me show you how this works. Over here, we have our describe method. And what I'm going to do is to copy and paste it and then name the second one describe2. And then I'm going to remove the return keyword over here and I'm going to remove the curly braces as well. And I'm going to replace them with an arrow operator, just like this. So what I want to point out here is that the describe and describe2 functions do exactly the same thing. So all the arrow operator does is to give us some syntactic sugar for defining a function that has only one statement. And just to show you an example where the arrow operator works well, we can add a new method, which could be a void space say name. It would take a single parameter string name. And then here, rather than using the curly braces, we can type in the arrow operator and then we can print. And then within double quotes, we could say, hello, I'm, and then dollar name with string interpolation and a semicolon in the end. As you can see, this is very useful when we need to define functions that are very short. And we will be using the arrow operator many times in this course. Okay, so this completes our overview about functions and we can continue on the next video. This is the end of part two. This introduction to Dart is a free sample of my upcoming Flutter course. So if you want to receive updates about my course, you can sign up on my website, codingwithflutter.com, and you will receive a promotional code when the course goes live. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.